This work can be frustrating and dangerous, both for the animals and their handlers. It takes skill and plenty of practice to get cattle to do what you want, with a minimum of fuss and excitement. Experienced handlers know that it all comes down to two basic requirements, good facilities and an understanding of the psychology of a cow. The animal kingdom is divided into two groups, predators and prey. Because cattle fall into the prey category, they behave like other ungulates, instinctively alert for danger and ready to take flight. They have a strong herding instinct and feel safest in a group. A cow's view of the world is very different from our own. Because of the placement of the eyes, a cow can see in an arc of over 300 degrees. It can easily detect motion, but may have trouble distinguishing what it is. For this reason, sudden movements will alarm cattle. Unlike predators, cows may have difficulty focusing clearly on objects directly in front of them. Every cow has what is called a flight zone. Any intrusion into this area causes the cow to move away. The size of the flight zone depends on the animal. It can vary dramatically, from a great distance for a wild range cow, down to nearly zero for a tame cow. A herd of cattle will have a shared flight zone which is slightly smaller than their individual flight zones. By working just on the edges of the flight zone, a handler can gently move cattle in the required direction without distressing the animals. Cattle respond emotionally to changes in their situation. Sudden movements, loud noises, and unpleasant odors are likely to provoke fear and even anger. To understand cow psychology means being able to see the world as a cow sees it and anticipate the animal's response to different situations. Cows have certain instinctive behaviors. Their responses may be influenced by the survival instinct, herding instinct, maternal instinct, and breeding instinct. Hi, I'm Tim O'Byrne, owner of Calico Beef Consulting here in Alberta. Over the last 20 years, I've worked on some of the major cattle operations in Western Canada. I've seen a lot of cattle go through the system. Now these cattle can outweigh us 10 to 1, and when we're working with them, it's very risky business. We can get hurt and all kinds of things can happen. So it is important for us to understand the behavior of cattle, the psychology, why they do the things they do, and how they react to certain things that we do. And this way we can use it to our advantage when we're having to deal with these large animals. This kind of setting is what cattle enjoy most grazing quietly in a pasture within the safety of the herd. Stress in cattle can be caused by hunger, thirst, cold, isolation, and fear. But the number one cause of stress is fear, and fear is most often caused by restraint. Well-designed facilities and the understanding of cow psychology are critical for cattle handlers. But another essential piece of equipment is this book, Agriculture Canada's Code of Practice for the Care and Handling of Beef Cattle. The appendix includes a list of regulations contained in the federal government's Health of Animals Act. Humane cattle handling is the law, and it's also good common sense. Skillful handling means that cattle can be moved more efficiently, with the result that the animals feel less pressure and are less likely to be injured. In this business, pressure is defined as invading the animal's flight zone, either physically or with noise. Eye contact is one of the biggest things if you're going to handle cattle. If you're wanting to hold an animal back and let another one by, you have to stare at the animal that you're going to that you're going to hold in an open pen or even in an alley. It works really well. It's hard to teach guys that when you're working. If you want to let an animal by, you have you can't be looking at them because they'll see that. These types of moving aids are becoming more and more common in the industry today. This is a plastic paddle, and it's got BBs in the head that make a noise when you shake it, uh, a whip, a stock whip with a plastic bag tied to the end of it, uh, it also does the same thing. Basically these aids are an extension of our arm and they're used to sort cattle 
in close confines. Uh, by blocking their direction, we can direct the animals simply by putting the paddle in front of them. And they're not used to actually touch the animals with because uh, it serves no purpose, um, as opposed to a cane or a sort stick. And animals, if they are hit or beat with a cane or a sort stick, they can be bruised very easily. So um, that's why this type of a, of a device uh, falls into the into the good production practices category. The range of influence concept was developed to help people understand that there's an area around themselves that they can control. And I can make it big or large depending on what I, I do, how I handle myself. Uh, I can use my body language, my moving aids, and the noise that I can produce by yelling, or in this case with this particular uh, cattle sorting paddle, we have pellets in here that that rattle and these cause uh, these kinds of noises can I can use to my advantage or actually to my disadvantage too. Now the first thing I have to do uh, when I'm coming into a cattle working situation is I have to be wearing my first contact. I don't want to scare these cattle right off the bat when I walk into them so I'm going to just kind of stay here for a minute or two or a second and kind of let them get a little bit used to me. I'll just walk out in here and my body language is very low-key. I've got my moving aid down, it's not making too much noise. I'll just walk out in here and I'll, as I stand here, I'll show you a circle around me. My range of influence will be fairly small. You can see the pattern starting to form now. We got some pretty tame cattle here. These cattle are pretty curious. So standing here low key like this, my range of influence, the radius in this case is only six feet on the cattle right in front of me and around the back here it's a little bit bigger. Now, if I take my moving aid and use it at waist level, maybe shake it a little bit, uh, I can make this range of influence a little bit bigger, okay, so you can see as I move around and the cattle move back from me, you can see that. So that's kind of a medium range of influence, so I've increased the diameter of that circle by quite a bit. Now I'm going to show the intense range of influence and how big I can make this circle. If I use uh, some aggressive body language, maybe wave my arms, I'm going to take this moving aid and put it up over my head and maybe yell a little bit. And I can make, these, uh, make my range of influence quite big and affect not only the cattle here, but cattle and surrounding pens. And there you can see the size of that circle. Most cattle don't like to be restrained, but a well-designed handling facility will be less threatening from the cow's point of view and safer for the handlers. Cattle will avoid walking into dark areas and will naturally move from a dark area into the light. Because their depth perception is limited, they have an instinctive fear of shadows. A good handling facility has adequate lighting that eliminates shadows. At the same time, the lighting should not be so bright that it disturbs the animals. A cow's wide-angle vision makes it difficult to tolerate glaring lights or harsh sunlight. Cattle move well along gradually curved chutes with solid walls. The walls prevent any outside activity from distracting the cattle. 
The gradual curve allows the cow to see its herd mate ahead, but is restricted enough to discourage an animal from trying to rush ahead to the end of the chute. My experience is um, anyone running some numbers, the, 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 the better uh, facility they have, the better job they do with their livestock, uh, which in turn uh, relates to a bottom line. So yes, you, you, know, you need facilities. No, they don't have to be elaborate and fancy. They've got to be uh, common sense oriented. Uh, they've got to be scaled to the number of cattle you're putting through. Uh, for example, you don't need huge uh, sorting pens and what have you if you're working with limited numbers. Obviously, feedlots running high numbers need a lot more facilities. A catwalk along the outside of the chute provides safe access for handlers. Good traction is extremely important in any handling facility. Wooden ramps should include square cleats attached every 20 centimeters. Loading ramps must not be steeper than 25 degrees and should be wide enough to accommodate cows in single file. Ramps and receiving areas that are kept clean will provide good footing for the animals. Any debris should be cleaned away and sharp protruding objects eliminated. Facilities that are designed with the cow's preferences in mind work more efficiently for cattle and their handlers. The hydraulic chute can be a major contributor not only to animal stress but to serious physical injury. Improper operation of the chute can result in shoulder abscesses, broken bones, broken horns, internal injuries, and damaged or pinched nerves. And cattle aren't the only ones in danger around these chutes. Handlers can easily be injured as well. When we're working with these hydraulic chutes, it's important to make proper catches. We want to use a little bit of side pressure and make a clean catch so we don't break a horn or cause a shoulder abscess or anything like that. And we're trying to avoid chokes as well. Uh, sometimes the animal can go down in the chute and piss the carotid arteries off. S some special cases that we have to think about are bloats and respiratory problems too. We don't want to squeeze them up too hard and aggravate their condition. And once the animal is ready to be released, the head gate is open wide so that the animal can clear it and not knock a hip down on the way out. Sorting cattle in pens and alleyways is a risky business. The process goes against the cow's herding instinct, making the animal feel vulnerable. One of the common causes of injury to handlers is being hit by a sort gate in an alleyway. You can take precautions to avoid injury and ensure that the sorting process goes as smoothly as possible. Make sure your first contact with the cattle is non-aggressive. Set the gates properly so that the cattle can easily move through the sorting area. Move any wild cows through ahead of the others if they remain with the rest of the herd, they could excite the whole herd. And use the buddy system to move problem animals. One of the biggest problems is trying to put too much pressure on them. Um, you do have to, I mean, in the end, the cattle have to do what you want them to do. The trick is to make them think that it's their idea. The majority of line shoots are fed with a, with a tub system, which is a round tub, a gate swinging. Um, and and you, you almost, you want to make the cattle go into that. And, and as they're coming out to the chute, if they can see cattle where they're going to, um, that's kind of where I go back to making them their idea and they, they want to get back. Working in close quarters with these big beef bulls is very dangerous. They're very unpredictable. So you have to be especially cautious when you're working around them and leave yourself an escape route. 